happy to have you here. Um, and uh, we're going to get right into it. Okay. So it's a short yeah. of time. Go for it. Um, okay, so uh, obviously the topic that we're going to be discussing with you is mostly is um, about the recent OSAP and tuition fee changes, etc. Mm -hmm. Um, now, the first question we have for you is, um, what criteria will um, your government be using to assess prospective mature students for qualifying for the free tuition and the non-repayable grants? So, um, the criteria will be the same for mature students in the sense that it will be income, uh, number of people in the family that are being supported, those kinds of factors, um, the, the region in which you're studying, the program, all of those, uh, all of those factors are the same. Okay. Um, my second question is, how does the government plan to offset the cost of providing this free tuition plan for low-income students? And will this plan cover the entire four to five years of undergraduate study? So students in Ontario um, who qualify would be eligible for eight semesters. So whether those eight semesters are undergraduate or uh, postgraduate is not, uh, is not material but but the number they would they would qualify for eight semesters so for example some students today have asked me um, well I've been in school I'm in my fourth year but I want to do graduate work will I qualify and the answer is yes because they haven't taken advantage of the Ontario student grant because it's only coming in this September so they would they would be able to apply uh, when they uh, when they apply for uh, for graduate school. In terms of offsetting the um, the cost, um, we've we've rearranged the system. So there was a system whereby there was support for lower income and middle income students. Um, there was a, a third thirty percent off tuition up to. Uh, students living in families that earned $160,000. And above that, there was a system of tax credits. So for wealthier families, they could, um, they could write off certain things. They would get a, they would get a tax credit. Um, we've changed that. We've canceled those tax credits. And that then is funding the, um, the targeting of the tuition to the lower income students. So, so it really, we didn't have to put much new money in because there was, uh, there was the ability to fund the new system through, uh, through the, um, the cancellation of those tax credits. Okay, yeah, I'm sure many in the York community who you met today were very happy to hear that. Um, now, but there is some criticism that um, more financial aid should be allocated toward young people because mature students are likely to be you know, better equipped, have a more firm background, have more resources um, to pursue a post-secondary education. Um, how would you respond to that? Well, what I would say is that um, if, if a, a mature student does have resources and does have an income, then they won't qualify. You know, or has a has a higher income. I mean, it, it it will depend what kind of financial situation they are in. So it's not by definition that students qualify for free tuition. There has to be there has to be a, a threshold of need, and that need is determined by the OSAP uh, assessment process. Um, and you know, um, the reality is that often people who leave school and go out to to work. Sometimes they do fine and they, they flourish, but sometimes their path is, is more challenging. And, you know, the reasons they left school mean that they are not able to succeed as well as, uh, as other students. So often it's very challenging for mature students to find their way back into school. And one of the things that is a, a barrier in those situations often is the cost of tuition. And so that's why we've expanded the program to, uh, to include mature students who have been out of school for longer. <clears throat> Um, critics further argue that in order for the Liberals to pay for these initiatives, as we said, uh, they'll be cancelling the education and uh, tax education and tuition tax credit. But um, through these initiatives, uh, it will free tuition for low-income students. But they say that it will squeeze the middle class. So that and that's a very real concern, and that's why. Um, although the uh, the free tuition program in the first instance is targeted at uh, students from families that earn fifty thousand dollars or less, in fact, the majority of students who come from families that earn fifty to ninety thousand will also qualify for uh, for low uh, for free or no tuition, um, and then 
up until uh, 160,000, again, those students will not receive less support than they receive now. So um, the middle income uh, family is is still very much a part of our uh, of our OSAP support system. Um, now, um, the Canadian Federation of Students um, they express concern that you know solely counting tuition fees does not reflect um, the real or the total cost that students have to uh, you know deal with when they attend post secondary education institutions. Um, and what is your response to that? And you know, in particular. What are you doing to uh, support students in some of those auxiliary costs as well? Mm -hmm. Well, as I as I said initially, the um, students at the lowest uh, income levels, um, many of them will receive better than free tuition. So they actually will get uh, more than free tuition, and there are also living costs built into uh, into those grants. So um, so there's a there's very much a recognition in the system that going to school is not just about the uh, not just about the tuition. There are other uh, there are other supports. Having said that, um, we did make a decision that uh, you know students that the money would be targeted at students who are in the most need, including those who are living in uh, middle income families that are not able to support them. Um, our last question um, is that what is your government doing to improve transit infrastructure uh, in the GTA particularly for students and by when can we expect the implementation? Well York University is sitting right at the absolute hub of, uh, of transit building and that uh, the subway extension is going to mean a huge difference for uh, for students who many of whom travel by bus now um, and uh, that subway will that Spadina uh, subway extension will open um, later this year. Uh, Premier Wren, if I could add one final question. Sure. Um, what was the purpose of your visit to York University today and also how has your experience on campus been? Well, it's been great. Um, I've had the opportunity to see a number of programs. I've been in the engineering building. I've had a little bit of a tour of the library. Um, I've had a chance to speak with uh, a number of students about the work that they're doing here. It's a phenomenal university. Um, the, the diversity and the size make it very, very special in the, uh, in the constellation of universities and colleges in, in Ontario. Um, and I'm here because I'm doing a campus tour. I am, uh, I'm traveling this week. Um, I'll, be, I'll be in the GTA, but I'll also be in southwestern Ontario. I'll be in the north. And I'm visiting campuses of colleges and universities. First off, first of all, to talk to students and to hear from them, which I, I did in the round table today here. And also to talk about the, uh, the OSAP changes because they're coming in September of 2017, this year. And so I want to make sure that as many students as possible have an opportunity to, uh, to interact with me. Well, I'm sure they appreciate that. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. Thank you and, very uh, much. Wish you all the best with all your initiatives. You're very welcome, and thank you, and all the best in your studies. Thank you.